Welcome to Zoom O'Clock with your host, Tessie Anthony de Nassau. This podcast brings you enlightening discussions with leading experts and public figures directly to your ears. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Zoom O'Clock with your host, Tessie Anthony de Nassau. I hope you have been well and that you have started the new year 2023 with a bash. I know that that my next guest did. Vivian Wong, the found, co-founder of Little Moons, an international brand, which scaled the brand from a small brand up to now being present in 30 countries around the world. She is an entrepreneur, but most importantly, Vivian is a really, really good friend of mine from London, which I dearly love. And we have known each other for almost a decade now. And it has been just such a delight to see you grow and flourish in your business, but also as a person and also as a woman. You are such an inspiration. Thank you, Vivian, for your time. Welcome. Thank you. Thanks for having me, Tessie. Great to be on here with you. This is just so fantastic. I was so looking forward to this because I haven't seen you for literally, what, three and a half years now in person because of the pandemic. Then I was pregnant and I'm just following you on Instagram and, and your channels. and. Yeah, I missed you. I missed seeing you. Yeah, talking. I think COVID was really awful for a lot of people. And I think it's been so nice reconnecting. And like you said, actually, we've been through so much in the 10 years. Our lives have changed immeasurably. And um, yeah, I'm really looking forward to sharing that with you. <laughs> this is fantastic. So there is so much we can talk about. But I think, you know, the underlying superwoman effect here is that you are a very successful entrepreneur, but from nothing comes nothing, right? You worked hard to where you are today with highs and lows, uh, privately and uh, work-wise. So um, let me tell, let's start with um, when you were a little child, right? Yeah. What did you miss? What did you see that you as a woman now can invest in more um, did you have any role models of women that are were there where you are now? I I have to say from the very beginning, my mom has been my role model, and she's been a really she's been fantastic in the sense that she always told me the truth that not many parents I think want to say sometimes. Like she's she educated me about money. She made me aware that I was a woman that I'd have to work harder. To, to achieve anything and particularly because she'd felt that herself um, as a you know an immigrant in a new country um, a bit of a language barrier which she had to you know learn and just navigating the world of work in the 70s with a young child where you don't have the employment laws like we have now so she sees the difficulty that women have in child you know bringing up children working juggling all of that and I still think that those barriers and difficulties still exist despite the law being equal now we're, we're equal in the eyes of the law but I think in society there's still a lot whereby we're not um and so my mum I think schooled me from a very early age on how to navigate that so fast forward then and I agree you know my mom as well she worked so hard she was a stay-at-home mom for a long time and yet you know she went back changed education uh worked for government now and just retired. And I think it's really, you know, as you said specifically, you know, the the environment that our mothers grew up in and the policies and the laws were not always so supportive towards them. And a lot has changed. And yet, right, Vivian, we have still a long way to go, if I may say, for us women now as entrepreneurs as well, but also women just in, in our lives and how we represent ourselves and what we stand for in our own worth. So, Talking about um, Little Moons, how did you get to the idea of creating a delicious, I have tried it, I am a big fan, my children are, my whole family is, and yeah, wherever I go in the world, I see Little Moons, and it always makes me so happy because it's you, right? And it makes me so happy to see and, you know, share something special with you because you're sharing something amazing with the world, a passion, right? And Aww. so Tell us about that, the story of Little Moons in a nutshell. 
Well, I, you know, the, I, I worked in the bakery that my mum set up because she ended up leaving work because she found it so hard to bring up her kids. And so she set up her own bakery where I worked in the summer holidays um, and, 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 you know, um, summers, you know, weekends. And I just saw how my mum and my dad eventually joined the business too, how much passion they had for making traditional biscuits that they missed from back home in Malaysia, where they, where they grew up. And so that's where I learned the craft and the passion for making sure that if you're going to make something, be proud of it. Make sure that it really is the best. I love seeing people eat Little Moons for the first time. I love seeing the reviews and just saying that the flavors just pop. So, so you know, they deliver so heavily on flavor and the textures. And we care about that. And, I, you know, I think we've I, I, I hope that we people think that we have a huge amount of integrity when it comes to making a great product, because I think, you know, that's the first start of, of, of building a successful business. But I think also um, the reason why I started Little Moons is because my mom said to me, you know, you probably want to start your own business because I was in investment banking before I trained as a chartered accountant. And I could see how difficult it, is. it was for the women who were two, three positions above me, had children. You know, it, it, it's hard to juggle that sort of lifestyle when it's so demanding and, you know, the culture isn't so supportive yet. I, I don't know if banking's changed much now, but, but I, I was in it um, uh, early 2000s. and. Um, and so, yeah, so starting Little Moons was just, I guess, my expression and independence as a woman. I started with my brother. Um, it just meant that we had more control over our lives and, and to choose in the future whatever we wanted to do. I, I ended up not having any children, but I think it would have been perfect, a perfect setup had I gone down that path because you can choose the hours that you work. You don't have someone judging you to say you're not putting the hours in the office because you know that if you leave early to take care of the kids to pick them up, you are working later on. My mom was working through eight o'clock, nine o'clock, 10 o'clock. I remember falling asleep listening to her working. Um, and so I think it's really important and it's empowering for women to start their own businesses and, and be more in control of their lives. Oh, That's not really reading why I started Little Moons, but it's a, there's a real backstory to, to how Little Moons became what it is. No, and I agree, you know, I see it as well, you know, my children, they see me work all the time and, you know, even my sons, sometimes I need to promise them not to bring my laptop when we go on holiday, but yet, you know, society just sees the good stuff, right? And they don't see the mountains of work, the weekends you work, the holidays you compromise. Uh, we don't really have much holiday, uh, I guess, well, uh, you know, I, I don't remember when I took the last holiday where I did not work at all. And so, um, you know, there's so much to it. They say, you know, the peak of the iceberg, but the, the iceberg is, if you have it around water, it goes so deep into the ocean, right? And as such, you know, there's so much to it than what the eye sees. And I think I, that too needs to be acknowledged. Yeah, I think there is a lot of work that goes, that's always ticking on in behind, behind a woman's mind. And I, I think my friends call it the mental load. My friends who have children and all my friends have kids and I, I, I'm, I'm a, a huge, I'm a girl's girl. I have many girlfriends and I just see the struggles that they have and they earn, they earn the equal amount to their husbands. They will have fabulous jobs, um, but they, they're the sole person who's in charge of making sure there's food in the fridge, placing that Ocado order, like thinking about what schools the kids are going to go to, thinking about, you know, if they have help, like what, what they're doing, what time, when, what, what the cover is. And that, that is a lot of work, additional work that women have to do that I sometimes don't think is, is visible and appreciated widely by society. Um, and I think it, it, you know, it should be talked about. And I think, you know, by having your, by having your own business and, you know, I don't, I don't have kids. So I'm not trying not to be hypocritical, but my, as my business grew very, like grew hugely over the last two, three years, I needed support at home from my husband. And, you know, if I'm going to build a successful business, it does mean that I need that support network from my husband, who is such a cheerleader of mine. And that's not to say that he was a stay at home husband or anything like that, but it's just wanting to support that like helping your, your wife. And if you're, if you say you're supporting women, support them at home in your private life as well, as well as just in professionally, you know, I think if, if during COVID, it was very difficult for, for women with, with kids because I think their husbands weren't helping them at home and they were the sole people that were taking care of homeschooling and things like that. And so I think, you know, I think we were just talking before about this is that um, a, a huge amount of success of Little Moons is because I have men in my life as well. And, you know, I've co-founded my brother. 
who all support us, me, women, and we can all juggle it. And it's not a girl and a, or it's not a gender issue. It's just seeing people as a partner and that partnership should be equal in all areas that you're working. Absolutely. No, I think it's so beautiful, you know. One thing, you know, young women can think about is, but also young boys, right? Men, choose your partners carefully, right? It's really about, you know, are these people also, are they, you know, are they team players? A relationship is is a team. A relationship is a, you know, they, they can be so much, but there needs to be a partnership, right? And as such, I think, um, you know, talking about the pandemic and, you know, I have four kids. The thing is, um, yeah, my husband was like, well, we had, didn't have Theodore yet, but the others were here. And he was just like, my God that's so much you know I need to get my work done and I'm like yeah me too yeah but my work is more important well why right and just these conversations right well I'm I'm the bread bearer you hear that from other guys as well and then you are as a woman you're like well I contribute as much to you to the finances as you do right let that be financially actually sharing the burden of paying the bills which often is the case or just contributing in other ways and making these people's lives run right being the hr director of yeah. the family and as you say you know that's often overlooked as something which is just normal and um you know that just should be like that but it is it is not it yeah is and it goes in ebbs and flows you know there's going to be times where my husband's work is incredibly demanding and i'm his support network there and i have to do everything to help him but it's really nice that when i really needed the support he was there too and i and i just think that's the importance of a partnership in a marriage that you you pick a partner and you know we've we've been on that journey together you know we're we're both divorced we both had to reassess what we wanted from a partner and um we've done Welcome the work haven't we yeah. <laughs> and, and you mentioned it about worth and I think it's women knowing their worth as well um in your own personal life and when you're looking for a partner I think when I was younger I didn't necessarily think that I deserved it and I just thought oh I'm, I'm expecting too much but now that we're older I think that we have a stronger voice and we have more confidence to say this is what I deserve this I, I deserve a supportive partner and I and I'm I don't know why I, I find a lot of women have a lot of sort of confidence issues when it comes to starting difficult conversations and, you know, yeah. talking about because all these a lot of arguments right with with partners is about money, childcare, um, sex as well. And I, I just think these are difficult conversations to talk about. And if we have the confidence to bring that up and, and, and discuss them and, and you, if you sweep conversations like that under the carpet, it's never going to resolve itself. And I've had to work really hard on those conversations in personal life and in business, right? Because business is all about relationships, managing people, particularly as your team is growing. It's all about having those difficult performance relationship d- development points. And it's just having the confidence to to bring those up and I've had a lot of executive coaching for professional work as well when you're managing a team managing relationships how do you manage that in a way that everyone feels supported and not victimized and because there there would be no business if our team didn't work well together and and that's the same as a part of marriage right no absolutely there's there was one story that just came into my mind and I was very young, right? I was like 20 years old or something like that. When I joined the royal family in Luxembourg, I remember the head of the royal household um, saying to me, you know, you need to do this and that and this and you need to give up this and and you can't do this. And, and I said to him, well, why? You know, I said, this was part of me before. Why can't I be me, right? I have, I'm very well educated. And um, I'm an elegant and 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 fun person, right? I would not go rogue or anything like that. And he would just be like, "Come on, don't be so ungrateful, right?" I kind of like, "Hey, we we are rescuing you from the street, you peasant. You be quiet now, um, because uh, you know that is what your life is now, you know." And I was just, and I remember how I felt about that, and I still feel about that very strongly. Where I'm just like, "Wow." This is really, you know, young women, you know, when you join families, often you have these, um, you know, um, demands and uh, what it should be and what you should do and how you should do things. And I think, yeah, I think it's really important in a relationship to bring it back what we said, to really assess your worth 
and know what you're doing and find the right partner that stands right next to you when the things go bad and cheers you on and celebrates in you when the things go right because a win for you is also a win for your partner and that is beautiful right because you share everything so let's talk this about talking about this exactly the one thing came to my mind which is also a unspoken mystery right women and finance you know we have often um you know should women have their own bank accounts and also what about financial education you know men they like to often take control over the finances and even though you are your, you are your own breadwinner you kind of feel like you're not because of that what do you think of this look i think that it's it's i personally and i'm a very independent person but i think it's important for all women to feel that they are are independent and have financial independent control even if your husband gives you an allowance and you and you're a stay at home mom i think it's important that you have a bit of money for you to spend on whatever you want without your husband necessarily seeing that you you went into boots like what did you buy in boots or well, you know there is there, there there is a need for you to be yourself not private not secret but you know I, I've always wanted to have my own bank account not because I'm I, I don't see myself as a partnership with my husband but just as my own individual person we can have our own bank accounts we should have that we should have the, the power to do that and it's not about being secretive or anything like that I, I just feel like you're your own human being you're allowed to have some privacy you have privacy in the bathroom why can't you have financial privacy as well you know, it's about boundaries. It's about respect. It's having respect for yourself. You deserve to have that control financially as well as your time and your life and who you see, where you go. And it's all part of that independence. And I think it's really important for women to have that, to fight for it, to to defend it. Was that? So, yeah, I, I think, was you know, we... Discussion for you with your husband? Because for me, I see these discussions in my head as well. I have them with my husband as well now. Um, it's an important discussion. So how would you, like any women or any woman or any man really listening, what would you give them as the advice that it worked for you and how could it work for them too? How would you approach this? I think that it's important for you to be completely open and honest. And so I have to say, completely honestly, it's something that I've had to work with with my husband. He's come with such an open heart to our relationship and he's put everything out you get a bonus and he's like, oh, I've just got this bonus this year. What do you want to spend it on? Do you want to spend it on the driveway? Do you want to do this up? And I was like, when at first early, early days, I was a bit like, do whatever you want with it. It's your money. Like, why are you asking me? Didn't say it out loud, but in my head, I was like, what is this openness of heart and sharing? And it was, and you know, for me, if I got a bonus, I'd be like, oh, I'm going shopping. I know exactly what coat I want. I'm doing this. I'm buying these shoes. I've had my eye on this. That's what I'm spending it on. To think like we'd bring it back to home and be like, oh, what should we do? I think, you know, maybe my mother took it too far when she talked about being independent. And so now I had to learn to be a partner and maybe like how men need to do it as well. And then I say, of course, it's money we've earned together. We should sit down and, and talk about it and think about it. We're not asking permission. It's just discussing where you want to go together in life. Is it that you want to retire early? In which case, let's both agree that we screw a lot of money of this away. Where do you see our career going? Maybe we can spend it all and splash it out and a car or a holiday, but at least you discuss it as a couple. And then it feels special because it's something that you've agreed together about where you're going, like life, life-wise, couple-wise, you know? And, and so I've really had to learn that with my husband because I was so independent. I was a bit like, this is my money. That's your money. Um, and then we have our shared amounts. Um, and it's been really nice to be that open and not be so secretive about what you spend and how much you're spending on clothes. I, I don't know if it's just me. I, I suspect not because a lot of my girlfriends are a bit like, ah, oh, I've got a secret little place where I squirrel some clothes away. So otherwise my husband's going to be like, what, you bought clothes again? Even though you've earned this money and you have the right, sometimes our things cost more than a man should know that we know that it costs. Because when you turn up on a date with your husband, you don't want him to see that dress costs this much and I know those shoes cost that much because you want to turn up and be an enigma still you know and you just want to be this beautiful woman that's turned up looking super elegant sexy however you want to look for your husband and there's a bit of je ne sais quoi about it it's like you're on a first date again he doesn't have to know everything about you yeah I like that. that's that's how I feel yeah love it I think it's so beautiful so um yeah I really like that that's very very nice and it's so true 
So when it comes then to money, bringing it back um, to and to being an entrepreneur, have you seen, um, because I'm an entrepreneur myself, and uh, I have worked with a lot of women and I have seen a lot of women <clears throat> struggling with this, you know, um, with, you know, when you build a company and asking for money, right, support, invest. Mm -hmm. Was that something that came easy to you? Uh, was that easier because your brother was there? And um, what does that have to do for you with self-development and growth? And also maybe perhaps saying no, right? To finding the right investor as well and not just taking the first thing that comes. I think um, that, we, you know, Alison Rose, who's the CEO of um, Bank of Scotland, she did an Alison Rose report for the government. And I think one of the top reasons why women find it so difficult for to, to get funding is confidence. We Again, we don't know the, the, our own personal worth that we bring to the table. We don't know the worth of our businesses. And I think that often when I speak to female entrepreneurs, they, they say, oh, my God, I've met this guy. He's amazing. Or I've met a person. They're amazing. I'm going to give them 10% of my business because they're going to they're going to really help me. Like 10%. That's crazy. Even 5%. That's huge. This person is unproven. How do you know? Just because it looks like they've got a great CV, have they, have they really impact to change in all of these businesses like don't be so quick to give away bits of your business and then confidence again so this comes back to being an entrepreneur and, and getting finance confidence for me has been a journey that I've been on for, for a very long time of personal development and I think that that is where if you become a confident person you are more confident in the boardroom you're more confident asking for investment and so that's why it's it's it comes hand in hand like growth as a person growth as a business and so when you go into you know when you go into these environments I think women always feel they need to know everything the answer to everything whereas men can just like two if they know two out of ten questions they already think they've got this and it really is a mindset and we need to learn how to interact in those environments like I think, you know, men need to change the way that they are, but we also need to meet them halfway as well. Um, and did I find it difficult? So I self-funded, my brother and I self-funded the business for the first 10 years. So we grew slowly. We um, found strength. a way. Yeah, I mean, we did it slowly. We um, didn't over-invest in, in certain areas that we couldn't afford to. Uh, you know, maybe our office was a tiny room above a factory. We didn't have a swanky London office or anything like that. And we did a lot of things. We we struggled through. I worked seven days a week. I did all the accounts if I could. I didn't hire someone to help. And it was, you know, hard graphs. But um, a year ago, we got investment from L. Catterton, which is a, a private equity company. Um, and I didn't find it difficult to find investment from them. But I think by then, our business was of the size whereby I had a lot of support. So I had me, my brother, we had our um, finance director, marketing director, sales director, ops director. And so there was a group of people going out to look for investment. But um, I, I definitely agree that if it was early stage and I was doing it myself at the, at the first stage of growth, like, you know, seed capital, it would have been difficult, particularly because I was less confident back then. Um, and that's why I would really encourage women to, to try and have more confidence in themselves um, and I think that's that is one of the biggest um, barriers to start with. But I think also, you know, the uh, the VCs, we need more women investing as well. So, you know, women investing in other women's businesses. Um, I think often if I see a woman on the across the table, I feel more at ease. But she would also, I hope, would make me feel more at ease because you kind of get each other more and you're not you understand each other's language in, I think, in a better way. That is beautiful. I think that's a perfect way of uh, wrapping up our discussion. I could talk to you forever. This is so, you are just an incredible human being. And you, you know, the way you talk about difficult conversations just really leads to the impression, definitely, and I hope also inspiration to the people who will listen to this, that it is possible to have the most difficult conversations and make them part of your everyday life. And just thrive, you know, community is something that I could hear from what you were talking about. Community, balance, you know, teamwork, uh, grit, knowledge. I think, um, yeah, I think there's a lot we can all take from, from your talk. I certainly did a lot today. 
um i look up to you so much you're so amazing really Aww. and i'm not okay. saying that because we're here on the on the on the talk i really i always told you that you know when i went through my darkest moments my divorce you were one of the first people i met actually in london yeah me Before, too uh, you know and it was just yeah and i remember i remember how vulnerable i felt to talk you know and it was with lisa you know in front of the sorority uh, to talk about this so personal thing and you were just you even if i if i recall it well you were even the first one that came up to me and hugged me and um i will never forget that so i think you're an amazing human being and you know i always have you back um so yeah thank you my last question to you that i always ask because i think it's a nice thing to leave people with something they can directly do besides of course going to buy little moons and try the moochie ice cream <laughs> fantastic um but so is there a book you would recommend a podcast a video a quote something that you can leave us with that people can look up and uh, learn through that a bit more about you that inspired you brought you where you are now that you're really just rereading all the time just because maybe it's a fictional something tell us a bit something through a reading or something that tells us a bit more about you um, I really like Elizabeth Day's podcast. She's got two, How to Fail, um, because I think through vulnerability definitely comes lessons and strengths. And, yes. you know, we both met at a very vulnerable stage when we both went through a divorce, but actually it's kind of the making of us. You know, we picked ourselves up and we're now stronger. Um, but something that um, applies to me from a business point of view and personal life is um, James Clear's book, Atomic Habits. Oh, yeah, yeah. And there is one quote that he says, and I'll probably misquote him, but it sounds something like this. And it's, you don't rise to the level of your ambitions, you fall to the level of your systems. And I think that's so true at work. If you want your business to grow, you need to put the systems in place for your business to be the 50, 100, 150 million pound business. Without those systems in place, you will not get there just on dreams alone. And it's also to do with your personal life. You have to have systems in place to support you, to have your girlfriends around you, good people you can talk to, to give advice, a husband that's supportive. You know, all of these, your systems to keep you strong, healthy, and happy to help you succeed in your personal life and then and then go on to thrive professionally wow that's it I had many guests on my podcast and this is the best quote I have heard so far I love it and it wraps up beautifully our whole conversation wow thank you Vivian this is this has been really fantastic I will talk to you offline oh great and so people please go and follow Vivian yes with little moons they have also a very vibrant tiktok channel and everything else you do so yes. uh, go and check her out and go to the supermarket in your country she's in 30 countries internationally so it's very likely she is where you are and just check it out and get a little bit of her feel a bit of the passion through her beautiful muji ice creams thank you vivian and love you very much thank you this has been wonderful i'll speak to you soon Thank you. Thank you for listening to this Sumo Club. We hope this discussion was insightful and has provoked some new ideas for you. Please share and subscribe. If you like to keep in touch with your host, you can find her on Instagram under Tessie underscore from underscore Luxembourg and on Twitter under Tessie underscore DE. <laughs>